Happy New Year, everyone. I hope everyone had a really good relaxing period. But unfortunately for many of us, reality has now set back in. But the best thing about the new year is that it offers an amazing opportunity to reflect and set resolutions on our financial goals. Yay. I'm going to go through 10 financial mistakes you should not do in 2023. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Now I have split this into two categories. The first five points are designed to tackle mistakes for those that are struggling financially to save and build wealth. With points six to 10 designed for those that have a decent foundation but want to take that extra step to building their financial wealth. So without further ado, let's get started. Mistake number one is getting into debt this year or increasing the amount of debt you currently have. Now the type of debt that I am referring to is bad debt, such as high interest rate credit cards, personal loans, borrowing money to pay for other debt, etc., etc. Now obtaining this type of debt is probably one of the biggest mistakes you can do when it comes to building your financial wealth. Looking at this graph, unsecured debt levels soared significantly over the last two years, which means an alarming amount of individuals have started this new year already with debt on their shoulders. You would have noticed that the graph also shows that unsecured debt levels haven't hit their pre-COVID peak, so perhaps we shouldn't be worried about this. But with interest rates on the rise, the ongoing cost of living crisis, and the increase in mortgage rates, borrowing has become far more expensive, and it will definitely put an extra squeeze on already squeezed households. I will be releasing a video next week where I go through in more detail on how to best tackle debt. But the key message is to stay resilient and do all that you can to reduce the amount of bad debt you have. I'll talk more on this next week, but here are some steps you can take in the meantime. First off is to make a list of all your debts and write down the amount of debt you have with them, the minimum payments you have to make, and the interest on that loan. Once you've made your debt list, also create a budget. You need to understand where your money is going, and you can do this by splitting your costs into two categories. One being your fixed costs. Now these are costs that you are obliged to pay, so rent, bills, minimum loan repayments, and then there are variable costs, which are the costs that you're not obliged to pay. So this can be how much you typically spend on a food shop, gas, public transport, or going to restaurants, for example. And from there, you'll know how much money you have left over at the end of each month. And with the money you do have left over, you can then look at your debt list, and then you can start strategizing which debts you're going to pay off first, while still making the minimum payments on the rest. There are so many methods on how you can do this, and I will go into more detail in my video next week. However, I just want to say that if you do find yourself in a really bad situation, please do speak to professional help. I've linked in the description box the National Debt Line, who are a free and independent charity who offer debt advice over the phone and online. Mistake number two is to forget to pay yourself first and living paycheck to paycheck. After the celebrations of Christmas and New Year, January is a great time to be frugal. Please take this time to get your finances in order. Understand your fixed costs and any variable costs you have. You can use my free budget spreadsheet to understand where you can save and how much money you have left over. And then you use this money to pay yourself first. For those that don't know, paying yourself first is an effective method to start building your wealth. It works by understanding how much money you have left to save each month. And then you transfer that money into a different account on the day you get paid. You can do this automatically by setting up a standing order and you can send the money to either a savings account, investment account, or a mixture of the two. The idea behind this is if the money is out of sight, then it is out of mind. And the money that you do have left over on your main checking account will act as your actual salary, which you then have left to spend. By doing this, you don't have to worry at the end of each month about if you have saved enough or if you've saved at all, because you did it at the very beginning, because you paid yourself first. Also, another great way of paying yourself first is by hitting that subscribe button. Mistake number three is to not cancel any unused subscriptions or at least find cheaper alternatives. The internet has meant we are now spoilt with choice on what we can subscribe to. A prime example of this being in the way that we now watch television. There is so much choice. You have Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, and several others. Really think to yourself if you actually use these enough, and if you don't, then just simply cancel them or at the very least, check for cheaper membership options. For example, in the UK, Netflix introduced a cheaper membership with a lower monthly payment, but it does come with adverts. Also, another tip for those that live in the UK, and this is actually something that we do, is that if you never watch live TV or anything on the BBC, 
you can perhaps consider cancelling your TV license and then you can realise a saving of £160 per year. I should warn you that you will get bombarded with letters, especially at the beginning, warning you about doing this. But as long as you don't watch the BBC or any live TV, then you're well within your right to cancel the license. Also check if some of your favourite BBC shows are on other services too, like Netflix or BritBox. Aside from TV subscriptions, other things you can consider cancelling are gym memberships, like just be honest with yourself, do you really go? Mobile app subscriptions and shop around for your utility bills. It's always worth comparing to see if you have the best deal on your energy, home insurance, car insurance, mobile contracts and internet provider. I regularly use a website called Uswitch for my comparisons. It's really simple to use and if there's anything you don't understand, you can always give them a call and they'll sort it out for you. Mistake number four is to continue spending on materialistic luxuries you simply can't afford. Now this one I actually think is one of the trickiest ones to tackle. There seems to be a lot of pressures, maybe from friends, family, or even society to behave in a certain way when it comes to buying items for yourself or even gifts for others. Advertisers are really good at influencing your purchasing decision to make you get the latest phone, wear a certain brand, and it's been made even easier with many stores now offering buy now and pay later options. If you are someone who is struggling to save and budget, you do need to cut this behavior out immediately, or at the very least be a bit more frugal when it comes to buying these items. For example, buy a secondhand car instead of a new one. Honestly, buying a brand new car is one of the worst decisions you can make. Buy secondhand clothing or gadgets. Buy an older version of a mobile phone or tech. Or especially when it comes to gifts, get them something a bit more personal which doesn't involve spending a lot of money. And I would encourage that any luxuries that you do purchase are budgeted for and paid with cash or debit. That way you'll know it's something you definitely can afford. Also, when it comes to gifts this year for friends and family, whether it be for a wedding, anniversary, birthday, or even Christmas, I genuinely believe there is no shame in saying, look, I would love to celebrate with you all, but at this point in time, I simply can't afford anything to give you. If they are a true friend and family member, they will totally understand. I see this happen the worst during Christmas time. It seems that we put a lot of pressure on each other to buy each other gifts when really, that's not the true priority. Mistake number five is to not have enough money in your emergency fund or rainy day fund or whatever you wanna call it. I know I keep banging on about this on this channel, but it's really crucial for financial stability. An emergency fund is a pot of money that you set aside where you dip into whenever unexpected costs arise. For example, perhaps some repairs are needed to your car or property, or even an unexpected bill you weren't prepared for. It's crucial that you have this buffer to make sure that you never go into the red and thus protecting you from getting into more debt. Mistake number six is not maximizing the full potential of your private pension. Most of us receive private pensions via our workplace and this will usually be some sort of defined contribution pension, which is when you and your employer contribute money to your pension pot every single month with the idea that once you do hit retirement, you'll have enough funds to retire comfortably. Now here in the UK, although it has slightly improved, its pension situation over the last decade is still pretty bleak with more than 40% of the UK population not having any pensions whatsoever. And for those that do have one, there seems to be a huge inequality between those on lower and high incomes. For those that do get a workplace pension, check with your employer if they run any schemes that will increase their contributions to your pension pot. If it is possible, find out how to get the most money from your employer. Perhaps they do a matching scheme. So if you increase your contributions to 6%, they will too. Do whatever it takes to get the most from your employer as this is free money that you essentially can't get access to through any other means. Also, if you've had multiple employers in the past, chances are you have several pension accounts too. Definitely worth looking into consolidating these under one roof to A, minimize the cost to you as each pension does have an annual fee and B, to allow for the compounding effect to be far more powerful. A 10% return on 500 is 50 pounds, but a 10% return on 50,000 is 5,000. And if you are someone who is worried about contributing more to their pension pot because your take home pay is tight enough as it is, please do remember that you do get tax breaks when you contribute. So the impact on your take home pay will be less than what you actually contribute to your pension. Play with this take home pay calculator to find out more. Mistake number seven is to not rethink how you save money. There are so many methods available to us on how to save money and they are constantly changing and updating. Looking at this graph from money.co.uk, they found that 60% of savers have their money in savings accounts. Although savings accounts are useful, it might be worth considering changing tactic. For example, in this household, excluding our emergency fund, 
all of our long-term savings are tied up in investments. Now, the reason why we do this is because up until recently, interest rates were at an all-time low, and the amount of interest you get from putting the money into a savings account was practically zero. If you have been following the news, you would have noticed that the rates are on the increase, and this has now actually been reflected in seeing higher rates on savings accounts. However, if we are looking over the long term, you are still far more likely to get a better return on your savings if you put it in investments instead. Now, I know this can be a scary step for many if this is something you've not even considered before, but investing with some time and financial education shouldn't be that scary as there are some lower risk options available. A great way to get started is investing in something called an index fund. These are low cost investment options which are naturally diverse, so they usually fare quite well when things get a bit tough. Check the links in the description box down below where I have made several videos on how to get started. And I also address some of the fears when the economy crashes and how it impacts your investments. Mistake number eight is to not have a financial plan. Make sure you have a financial plan for your future by setting some financial goals. Do you want a property in X amount of years? Do you want children? Do you want to move abroad? You can always change these goals as time progresses, but it's always good to have an idea of where your financial path is headed. I am a huge believer that by actually writing things down and planning for a financial goal, you have a far better chance of manifesting it. Looking back in 2018, me and my partner set out a plan to buy our first property together. And then three years later, we managed to do it. Having these regular planning sessions are really, really important. And if you do have a serious partner, make sure you are having these discussions together as you both need to be on the same page. Another financial goal could also be that you want to be financially free or retire at a certain age. You'll need to figure out how much you need to do this and start planning for it. Luckily for you, I have a free spreadsheet on how to do this. Check out this video here. Mistake number nine is not having an official next of kin. Now, the most common way to do this is by having a will. Now, a will is a great way to organize who gets your assets when you pass away. And unfortunately, and it is sad to say, but it may be necessary to put some financial thought in how you want to split your assets in the most tax efficient way. Check out my video on inheritance tax to learn more. Now, having a will is one way of dividing your assets, but if you are married or civil partnered, by default, all of your assets will go to your partner in the event of your passing and vice versa. If this suits you for now, then this might be sufficient. However, as time passes, you should eventually think about getting a will sorted. And finally, mistake number 10 is to not improve your financial education. Honestly, financial education sucks in this country and probably in most countries. The conspiracy theorist in me tells me that they do this on purpose to keep the poor poor and the rich richer. But anyway, the reality is financial education sucks generally. So it's left up to us to figure it out for ourselves. Even if you have some knowledge, there is always more to be learned as things are constantly changing. Luckily for us, there are some great materials out there to help us start learning. You have books, the internet, and YouTube channels that tell you all of this stuff. Even talking with friends and family is a great way to get those financial brain juices going. I'll link some books in the description box down below of some of my favorite books just to get you started. Cool, so those were my 10 financial mistakes not to do in 2023. I would like to leave you with another bonus tip, and that is that personal finance is focused a lot on building and securing your financial future, which is sound advice, but at the end of the day, tomorrow is never promised. So as long as you are not in a real financial struggle, make sure you budget some funds, it doesn't have to be many, to just entertainment or having fun. I personally have fallen for this trap of being so focused on saving money that life became really uneventful and frankly quite boring. Only recently have I managed to strike a good balance that works for me by saving X amount of money for my future, but also Y amount of money for living in the moment. And I'd encourage you to do the same. Cool, so let me know in the description box down below if you have any more suggestions. And remember to like and subscribe. Bye. Pow.